Hello and welcome. You are watching Property Hotline with me, Kavita Krishnan. And today we are answering all your questions related to taxes that you need to pay while buying, selling, or investing in property. And for all answering all your questions, we have with us Samir Kanabar. Samir is partner tax and regulatory services at EY LLP. Samir, welcome to the show. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, we have uh, Mitesh who sent in a question from Pune. Yes. Now he says that he had a one BHK flat in Yerwada that he bought in 2002-2003 for 3.75 lakh rupees and he sold it in 2016 for 25 lakh rupees. Now he kept it in a capital gains account in a nationalized bank. He's told that it is taxable at 20%. Now he wants us to guide him on avenues to reinvest the money and to avoid the tax burden. How much of the amount is taxable? Can he reinvest the money in agricultural land in his hometown? He says that the cost of residential properties are way beyond his capacity. And a local tax consultant also told him that the period to invest in bonds is over. Uh, so basic capital gains 101 is what he's uh, see, looking for, I guess, uh, Samir. Uh, what, what would you say? Yeah. So, of course, uh, uh, I mean, uh, he should be a very happy person. <laughs> he's realizing huge capital gains, uh, invested 3.75, realizing 25. Uh, but jokes apart, uh, I think one good thing that he has done is he has at least parked the funds into the right bank account, which is a capital gains account. Uh, most of the time, people miss the bus uh, and are not able to sort of ensure that at least they park the funds in the right bank account. So that's good news for him. Uh, obviously, I think uh, he has been advised right uh, that the time period to, invo uh, to invest in uh, uh, bonds is six months from the date of sale. And if he doesn't invest within six months period and then post that if he invest, he doesn't get any benefit. So assuming that that period is lapsed, uh, the bonds uh, as a saving avenue, uh, tax saving avenue is out. Uh, obviously, he should not uh, look at avoiding tax. Uh, of course, I don't think he intended to avoid tax, but I think he wants to plan his tax or wants to minimize his tax. So to minimize his tax, he has uh, still a couple of uh, options available. Uh, he can either buy a property, uh, a constructed property anytime within a period of two years or he can uh, book an under construction property uh, and ensure that uh, if he, he gets uh, delivery of the flat uh, or the house within three years. If not, at least he should ensure that he is able to invest uh, the amount of uh, capital gains into the under construction property within a period of three years. In which case, uh, he need not pay tax. But if he misses all these three uh, avenues, then obviously he has to pay 20% capital gains tax. Right, you... because he very clearly, he says that, you know, uh, ready pro uh, buying property is out of the question because yes. it's way too expensive. Correct. We know how property rates have gone up in the last uh, few years. Yeah. Now, uh, he also wants to know whether he can invest in agricultural land in his hometown. Is that an avenue that he can look at? Yeah, so uh, the income tax law at least does not allow uh, investment in agriculture land. It says if you sell a house, you buy a house. Uh, the, the sort of uh, rationale or philosophy is to give incentive uh, for people to buy a larger house or move into new house. And that's why the capital gains are not taxable. But you can't sort of just buy an agriculture land unless he wants to buy a land and construct a house on that land and that too if he is able to do it in three years, then that should be still possible. Okay, so you can actually buy a land, uh, use the money, the gains that you made to buy land and then you can construct a home on that, that has to be done within three years. Uh, but again, this cannot be done on agricultural land, you need to buy non-agricultural land to... Yeah, so he has to uh, convert agricultural to, to NA and then right. he can do it. Yeah. So, uh, Mitesh, uh, the uh, basic answer is this. The answer to your question is that uh, ideally you need to you need to reinvest the capital gains in a residential property that is in a home. You can sell whatever property you want. You have to reinvest that in a home. And uh, if uh, your uh, your time period to invest in capital gain in capital gain bonds is six months, these are the numbers that you need to keep in mind. In a ready property is two years and an under construction property is three years. So this is a time period that you have to reinvest gains. If you're unable to do so, 
then of course you will have to pay 20% tax on that. Moving on to a query from Rameshwaran now who is buying property and uh, to get capital gains tax exemption he says that he has to get the property registered in his name within 3 years. Now but due to the delay from the builder side the registration would be delayed by uh, 1 or 2 months. Now he wants to know if he is still eligible for exemption of capital gains tax. Does he need to register the property in his name? How does it work? Yeah, so uh, I'm assuming that he's uh, buying an under construction uh, property or a property which is uh, being constructed mm. and which hopefully is now ready. And in that case, of course, the time period available is three years. So while the plain reading of the law suggests that the house has to be uh, constructed within a period of three years, but recently there has and this is the position tax office has been taking consistently. But recently there was a similar issue came come up before uh, a tax court where the tax court had an opportunity to evaluate the law and the tax court interpreted the law to say that the law says that you have to invest money uh, or capital gains in three years. Even if you don't get property within three years, it's fine. So assuming that he has invested the entire capital gains within this three three years period, which is an under construction property, in which case uh, he still need not pay any gains tax on a previous property which he would have sold. Right. So and Sami, that should be a, a great news for a lot of home buyers out there because we know that uh, projects across India have been delayed in the last uh, couple of years, and of course uh, people would be staring at huge losses if they would have to end up paying 20% uh, tax on all those capital gains. However, one other thing that he asked and I want to you know clarify that point. Uh, he wanted to know, Rameshwaran wanted to know whether he has to get the property registered in his name within 3 years. Now uh, we, we talk about reinvesting, but how do you prove to the IT department that you have actually reinvested these gains? Do you need to buy property, sign an agreement and register that agreement? Is that the only proof that you can show them? Also, uh... Uh, basically, if uh, he has already signed an agreement and he has made legitimate payments uh, to the developer, then that is adequate proof to show that yes, there is an signed agreement, uh, which probably he has still not registered. He can go and register. I don't think he has to wait uh, for the property to get constructed to register a document, but that is his choice. But he has to at least submit a legitimate no, document. I think the problem here comes from the fact that in a lot of cases, uh, people do sign an agreement. Mm. But uh, there is a final agreement they sign. What they get is a letter of allotment. Correct. And uh, they sign a final agreement at the time of possession. Yeah. And that is the agreement which is then uh, registered. Correct. So in that case, uh, what uh, do home buyers do? Yes, yeah, so if he doesn't have an agreement, uh, obviously still a letter of allotment is uh, still good enough. But more importantly, the proof of payments and uh, showcasing that these payments have been received by the developer. So, a mm -hmm. confirmation from a developer saying that yes, he has received X amount, which should mitigate his liability. And obviously, once the flat is uh, constructed, ready, once he signs the agreement, he has to get it registered uh, as a final proof. Right. So, the developer can give him an affidavit or a letter yeah. saying that the payment has been made. Correct. So uh, essentially you need to uh, have a paper trail that shows that you have made these payments to the developer and that should be enough uh, to convince the tax authorities. However, it goes without saying if you have an agreement and ideally you should have signed an agreement, then you should also register the agreement because that is the only legal proof that you have that you actually own that property. Okay. Raj uh, has sent a question through email now. He says that he has booked an under, under construction floors in 2013. Now this is still under construction and he's paying as per the builder's demand but recently the builder started charging him 4.5% service tax on each demand raised. However, as per Raj's knowledge, the service tax that he is entitled to pay is only 3.5%. Now Raj wants to know if it is correct. Some of we are seeing a lot of this especially after the tax rates uh, were uh, reviewed and were changed. If you could just break it down for our viewers. Yeah. So, um, obviously, first of all, service tax is applicable for under construction property. Uh, obviously, if you buy a ready property, there is no service tax. So, uh, to answer first his question, is service tax applicable? The answer is yes. Uh, since he has been paying erstwhile 3.5%, the logic, the way it works is that earlier, 
the tax rate was 14 percent service tax and the abatement available was 75 percent this abatement is actually for embedded value of immovable property because service tax per se cannot be levied on immovable property it is applicable on the constructed value of the property so to standardize uh, the reduction of the value of immovable property and not getting into valuation the service tax authority had erstwhile said that there will be 75 percent abatement so on that basis approximately three and a half percent what was the right rate which was applicable post that the rate changed to 15 percent so rate increased and abatement came down from 75 percent to 70 percent so if i apply 70 percent abatement to 15 percent increase rate then again the new rate is four and a half percent so what his developer is charging him as 4.5 percent is the right service tax rate which he has to pay as per the terms of the contract right so i mean also earlier if i remember right uh, uh, you know there was uh, a certain exemption that was given to property uh, to, if the pro property was under 2000 square meters hmm. or if it was under a crore uh, if the value was under a crore you didn't you needn't uh, pay this uh, amount of, of service tax or it was lesser does that still hold or is it one uh, single rate for all properties? Yeah, it's a single rate now applicable to all properties. So here's what you'll need to remember. Essentially, the tax department has uh, changed. The uh, service tax rates have changed. They have increased to 15% and the abatement has gone down. Uh, but if you do not want to re re remember all the math, the simple thing that you need to remember is that now you need to pay service tax at the rate of 4.5% on any under construction property yeah. and you have to pay it on all properties there is a single rate that the government has released for all properties that's what you need to keep in mind Vinod uh, wants to know if one has a professional income of say 34 lakh rupees in the current financial year can 50 percent of this income that is 17 lakh rupees be treated as tax exempt under section 44 ADA of course, this is not a real estate or a property related tax uh, query. But Samir, I'm sure you're accomplished enough to answer this as well. <laughs> yeah, because even I am a professional. Uh, so any professional earning less than 50 lakhs uh, of income uh, can uh, pay tax at the, uh, on the 50% value, uh, which is the law. So in his case, it will apply. Right. It will apply. That is something that you need to pay. And as you can see, it's not just real estate that we answer. We also answer all your other uh, income tax queries as well. And, and and I sense that we are going to get quite a few of them as we get into tax season. A uh, question from Naresh. Now he says that uh, he sold a flat in September 2014 and he deposited the money in capital gains account after indexation in a nationalized bank. Now as per IT rules, he booked a flat within a year, paid from the capital gains account and his savings in September 2016. Now position is expected in April 2017. He wants to know if it is compulsory to reinvest the gains within two or three years if he were to cancel this booking and book another flat instead, which is due for position by March 2017. Will he then have to pay capital gains tax on flat sale in 2014? Can he still avail capital gains exemption on the second new flat? So he sold something, reinvested, but he wants to cancel this one and book another one. Correct. Does it work? Yeah, so first of all, uh Again, he has done the right thing. He has put money in the right uh, bank account uh, under the capital gains uh, scheme account. Uh, he is uh, discharging his obligations through that account, which is also the right thing. Uh, obviously, he has either two years to buy a ready property or three years to buy an under construction property. Uh, so long as he is able to buy uh, or construct a property within this time frame, uh, he should get uh, uh, exemption from capital gains arising from his previous house. If he violates any of this condition and is not able to either uh, invest the entire capital gains within two or three years period, then obviously capital gains would be taxable. In his case, he has a unique question. His question is that what happens if he cancels the house? Uh, obviously, he can cancel the house, which is not an issue. But again, he has to ensure that the next house which he is either buying or getting it constructed, he is investing that amount uh, 
within that period of two to three years. So obviously, if he cancels, I'm assuming he will get money back. He has to ensure that he deposits that money back into the capital gains account. Uh, and then again, uh, discharge uh, the purchase price uh, or the consideration of the new house, which is either buying or getting it constructed and ensure that he is discharging that no, entire Sami, value. Looking at the question that he sent us, September 2014 is when he sold the flat. Correct. And uh, April 2017 is when he expects position in the second flat that he hopes to uh, buy. Correct. So in that case, he should be well within the three year. Uh, he should be. Yeah, he has two year period has gone. Uh, now buying uh, an under construction house and ensuring that he is investing that entire value of capital gains within that short time frame is what he has to still ensure. Otherwise, uh, he'll be taxable. Right, we are already in January, so you're cutting it very, very close. But if you can manage to pull it off, then yes, you can uh, claim that capital gains exemption. Uh, Narasimhan has written in to us. He says that he's a senior citizen. He rented out a commercial property before government had introduced service tax. Now, the lease deed that he had signed at that time says that any new taxes applicable will be paid by the landlord. Now, after service tax was introduced, the tenants obviously refused to pay the service tax. Now, the tenant owes him money since he has to pay it. Tenants also filed a case for payment of service tax. Can he claim the service tax that he has paid until now? He also wants to file a case against the tenants. They have been occupying the society for over 10 years. He was told that he can claim up to three years of the service tax that he paid. He asks us if he can file a criminal case against the tenants. He's already signed an agreement saying that any f uh, future taxes will be taken care of by the landlord. Correct. Can he still go ahead? So, I think, so first of all, under service tax law, the liability to discharge service tax as per the service tax law is uh, the onus is on the owner or the landlord, which is in his case. So, he has no choice but to discharge the service tax liability by paying appropriate service tax. Now, it is a matter of commercial consideration between the two parties as to whether this service tax he can recover from the tenant or he has to bear it. And obviously, uh, his agreement uh, seems to suggest that he has agreed to bear uh, the service tax liability unless there is any change in law clause in his agreement which allows him to levy new levy uh, new tax which was not prevailing when he signed the agreement so he has to hunt for a change in law agreement a clause in the agreement if there is no such clause i'm not sure uh, it is a legal issue uh, and he should be best guided by a lawyer or a legal advisor that whether his case will survive or not but vis-a-vis -vis service tax i think he has discharged so long as he's paid service tax he has discharged his obligation right so, essentially, it is your responsibility uh, to pay the service tax as a landlord. However, as far as your uh, case with the tenants goes, that is something that you really need to sit and, uh, one, have a conversation with them, and second, consult a legal expert. What we can do for you is get our legal expert uh, to answer your uh, legal query, and uh, you can uh, tune in for that show and see what he has to say. We'll definitely uh, take up this question on Tuesday when we answer all our legal queries. Moving on, uh, we have uh, Varun who sent in a question through email. Now, he says that there is a contradiction that some people say while deducting TDS, service tax component should not be included. While some say that TDS should not be deducted from service tax. So, what is true? Is TDS included in service tax? Yeah, so, uh, there was a dilemma and I think uh, what he's saying is right. Up to certain period of time, where uh, there was no clarity that whether TDS has to be done on the entire value uh, or only on uh, uh, the uh, embedded value of the consideration. Uh, the CBDT had issued a circular in 2014 clarifying this position to say that now you have to do TDS only on the consideration value and not on the service tax provided that the invoice clearly breaks down that what is separate value of service tax embedded in the total invoice. So, there should be value of consideration and there should be service tax separately identifiable on invoice. Then you should only do TDS on the consideration part and not on service tax. Right. So, essentially when you are, when you get the, the when you sign the agreement, the uh, prior, the cost of the flat that is laid out, there you need to have a breakup. And if that breakup is available, then you need to only pay TDS 
on the value of the flat. You know, I have another question. This came up when uh, we were actually uh, uh, working on the show earlier today. Uh, and this, uh, this was the entire service tax breakup. Now, we saw that in a lot of places, it includes Swachh Bharat says and uh, your, uh, and I'm sorry, there's one Krishi more, Krishi Kalyan says. It includes both of that. So, uh, what is service tax levied on? Val cost of the flat plus Swachh Bharat says plus the Krishi Kalyan says or are these levied separately? Yeah, so uh, these levies are applicable where service tax is applicable. So, of course, where service tax is not applicable, these levies would not come into play. Mm. And that is how your effective tax rate is 15%. So, service tax 14%, 0.5% Krishi Kalyan says and 0.5% uh, Bharat uh, Swachh tax. So, that adds up to 15%. Okay. So, now 15% is the service tax that is applied on the value of consideration and that is how uh, that is getting discharged. So, obviously, when the landlord who is charging this uh, different taxes, he will have to deposit that in this breakdown, 14% service tax, 0.5% so and so, 0.5% so and so. And the purpose of this says is that it goes to central uh, revenue account where the government is not obliged to give away this says to the states. Whereas as per the budgetary allocation, whatever service tax is collected by central government has to be appropriated to states in a certain ratio. Mm. But this cess does not is not required to be discharged to the cess. Government can keep it to itself. Okay. So essentially that is the reason why your service tax has gone up from 14% to 15%. And your Krishi Kalyan says and your Swaj Bharat says it's part of the overall service tax component that you pay when you buy a flat. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Basin on the line from Delhi. Uh, go on, Dr. Basin. How can we help you? Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, I, I have a query regard, regarding capital gains. Mm -hmm. My father, who's a senior citizen, 80 years old, he has booked. He had sold a property in 2011 in Gurgaon. Okay. And within six months, he invested in a property in Noida, under mm -hmm. construction property in Noida, and okay. deposited the rest of the amount in capital gains account with a nationalized bank. The builder was supposed to deliver the flat in uh, 18 months, extendable to 24 months. Mm. Until date, he has failed to deliver the flat. So now my regard, uh, query is regarding the income tax liability. And uh, in case we have that, um, can we make the builder a party to it? Because the fault lies on the behalf of the builder. Right. Uh, we, we have partly answered this, Samir. Uh, similar question, 2011 was when uh, the flat was... Uh, booked and uh, we are in 2017 now so obviously six years and uh, the uh, you need to in reinvest the gains within three years is what the law says what can uh, dr basin's father do what what is the tax liability that he's uh, that he has to pay so uh, <clears throat> so one has to of course get into facts so assuming that the capital gains was 100 uh, from the previous uh, sale of property and if they have actually invested this 100 uh, as a purchase of under construction property within the three year period which expired in 2014, mm. then there should not be any tax liability or to the extent that they have invested, say out of 100 they invested 60 and 40 is still not invested, then the tax liability circles back to 40, at least they should get a relief up to 60. But if they have not invested anything, then obviously the tax liability would be on the entire amount. Uh, here, uh, just because the developer has not delivered a property, there is no provision in the law. While I do have sympathy uh, with what uh, she is saying, but as of now, today there is no provision in the law that if the developer has not developed property for whatever right or wrong reasons, uh, whether you should get a deduction uh, from capital gains tax or, right. or not. Sami, so what, sh what should Dr. Basin's father do? Over here? Uh, what you're saying is that, uh, I mean, basis what you told earlier, uh, to an earlier uh, question, uh, question uh, he, they get, a, they essentially get a breakup of all the payment that has been made to the developer and they get that uh, verified or ratified in that sense by the developer, right? They get yes. an affidavit yes. or a signed statement from the developer that this money has been received. And if you show that to the tax department, that should take care of your liabilities. Also, that is, uh, yes, Samir. Also, I, and of course, that should be shown within period of three years. Mm. But at the same time, if they are doing 
because the property is not developed, I'm assuming that they would be seeking compensation from the developer as well. As part of compensation, if they end up paying any capital gains tax, then they should put this amount in the value of compensation as a matter of settlement and they can still recover because that is the cost that they have incurred, which otherwise they would have never incurred. Right. That's an interesting thought over there. And of course, we will discuss it at length in another episode of Property Hotline. But now we are running out of time. Samir, thank you very much for coming in and answering all those questions. And of course, if you have any questions related to real estate, it could be buying, selling, investing, legal issues, home finance or taxes like those we answered today. Call, write in or personally tweet to me. We'll make sure that all your questions are answered. Thank you for watching. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash magicbricksnow. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at magicbricksnow. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash magicbricksnow.